Welcome to Good Shepherd Baptist Church streaming services. Catch us at goodshepherdbaptist.org or on our Facebook page every Sunday at 10 a.m. Also join us on Mondays at 6 p.m. and Wednesdays at 6.30 p.m. The days and times listed on your screen are also available on the website. In just a few moments, we will be joining Bishop Jeffrey L. Reeves Sr., Senior Pastor of Good Shepherd Baptist Church with today's message. We can be reached at goodshepherdbaptist.org. Follow us on social media on Facebook, Twitter, and Instagram. Also, download the Good Shepherd app from the Apple iOS App Store, Google Play, or Amazon App Store. And giving online is easy. Go to goodshepherdbaptist.org and click the Give Online banner. Or, using the app, click the Give Online icon. Stay tuned for a few more announcements after the sermon. We now join Bishop Jeffrey L. Reeve Sr. with our message. Let us bow our heads together and pray. Oh God, our Father, how excellent is your name in all of the earth. How thankful and grateful we are to have this opportunity again to come before your presence. We bow on our knees and we pray our prayers. Thank you, Lord, for another day. Thank you, O oh God, for your grace and your mercy that you continue to shower down on us. We thank you for our time together this morning. We pray, God, that our time together will be well spent around your word. As always, O oh God, give us an ear to hear what the Spirit is saying unto the church. And again, O oh God, anoint me afresh. Give me the ability to preach your word with power. God, use me for your glory. Is my prayer in Jesus' name. Amen and amen. We invite your attention this morning to the Gospel of Matthew, chapter 15. And we want to ask you to uh, read with us between verses 21 and 28. That's Matthew chapter 15, beginning at the 21st verse. The Bible says, Then Jesus left Galilee and went north to the region of Tyre and Sidon. A Gentile woman who lived there came to him pleading, Have mercy on me, O Lord, son of David. For my daughter is possessed by a demon that torments her severely. But Jesus gave her no reply, not even a word. And then his disciples urged him to send her away. Tell her to go away, they said. She is bothering us with all her begging. And then Jesus said to the woman, I was sent only to help God's lost sheep, the people of Israel. But she came and worshipped him, pleading again, Lord, help me. And Jesus responded, it isn't right to take food from the children and throw it to the dogs. She replied, that's true, Lord, but even dogs are allowed to eat scraps that fall beneath their master's table. Dear woman, Jesus said to her, your faith is great. Your request is granted. And her daughter was instantly healed. Amen. Permit me to read the 28th verse again to you. Dear woman, Jesus said to her, your faith is great. Your request is granted. And her daughter was instantly healed. On this Mother's Day 2020, I want to preach to you today about the faith of a mother. The faith of a mother. The story before us here, my brothers and sisters, is fairly simple. In the course of Jesus' travels north to the regions of Tyre and Sidon, the Bible says that he encounters 
that he engages, and in my opinion, he is educated by an expectant woman who comes to him seeking help for her daughter who is under demonic distress. Her approach and the way that she asked Jesus for help indicates to us fairly quickly that her daughter's need is dire and desperate. We so often conclude that whenever we read this commentary, that in this text we assume that, <clears throat> that when Jesus ignores her and ultimately uh, insults her, when Jesus sends her away, that the, all of this in the text is meant to be a test for the woman. But my brothers and sisters, this idea that Jesus was testing her, somehow trying to bring to harvest the faith that was already planted in her, in my opinion, it may be a bit of a stretch. Because as I was reading the text, I was concerned, and to some extent I was uh, confused, because I did not see anywhere in the text where the woman had a preceding relationship with Christ. I know that she had faith, but I'm, I'm wondering where did her faith come from? I said, I know she had faith. I know she had faith because Jesus references her faith. He references her faith as the reason why he finally honors her request. In fact, Jesus calls her faith great faith. However, my brothers and sisters, if she is not clear about who Jesus is, she is nonetheless committed to Jesus as the only source and solution for her daughter's situation. Let me try that one more time. She does not have some preceding relationship. But somewhere along the line, she believed that Jesus was able to heal her daughter of her affliction. And I thought to myself that rather than this whole uh, idea in the text being one of a test for the woman, that could it not be that this woman with her faith is testing Jesus? Maybe, maybe, maybe the woman in the text is not only testing Jesus, but she's teaching Jesus. She's causing him to reconsider, to rethink, to reevaluate his initial uh, position to deny her request. Something about the faith of this mother that made Jesus change his mind. Jesus said to her, it's right there in the text, he says, it's not right to take food from the children and throw it to the dogs. If this is the case, then is it wrong for Jesus to heal her daughter? I, I contend, again, my brothers and sisters, that this text is telling to teach us all something about the powerful possibilities of our faith. That our faith, that when it is pointed and persistent, it retains the power to sway the Lord to suspend his own rule. I'm going to try that one more time and tell you that your faith has the power to cause the Lord to suspend his own rule. While I'm at it, let me go a little bit further and tell you that all of us are where we are in this world today because somewhere along the line, the God that we serve, because of our faith in him, he suspended the rule. We are not here based on our own merit. We are not here because we are somehow a person of perfection. We are here. We are living. We are breathing because God looked past our faults and he met our need. Whatever may have precluded us from receiving the blessings and the benefits of God's mercy and grace, he granted them to us anyway because of our faith, a faith that caused the Lord to suspend his own rules. And might, and might I add that, that some of us need to remember this, 
before we get all puffed up, before we get all upset with Jesus because of the way he reacts and responds to this woman's request. I mean, the text indicates that according to Jesus' initial response, that her request was inappropriate. But even though her request may have been inappropriate, it was nonetheless insistent. So I just need to tell you that before you get mad with Jesus and or get mad with her, please understand that all of us are guilty of asking the Lord for something that we did not deserve. All of us are guilty of making requests to God without having a semblance of a relationship with him. But then again, even though there's no relationship to boast of, we can still stand here today and say that we are the recipients of what God has given. Amen. Who said we had to deserve everything that we have received from God? I know I didn't deserve everything I received. Amen. I know I haven't deserved everything that I've received from God. Some things God will do because we put our faith in him. I've learned to do what the Apostle Paul encouraged Timothy to do in 2 Timothy chapter 2 and verse 1, where he tells us to be strong in the grace that is in Christ Jesus. Be strong, be encouraged, be empowered, be strengthened by the grace that is in Christ Jesus. Amen. You put your faith in the Lord, the Lord will extend to you a grace that is sufficient amen, that will strengthen you. And so Paul says, listen, we don't deserve everything that we have, amen, but understand that there are times that because of our faith, God is willing to give us those things that we don't deserve. And to know that, Paul says, amen, it gives strength to the heart and to the life of the believer. Be strong in the grace that is in Christ Jesus. Well, I got to close this little homily today. And may I tell you that at the end of the day, an innocent girl who was struggling with demon possession is set free. She is released from the clutches of the enemy. She is rescued from the kingdom of darkness and can now live her life anew. My brothers and sisters, this young girl, because of the faith of her mother, gets a second chance. The faith of her mother forces Jesus to look at the bigger picture. And I submit to you that it had a profound effect that extends beyond the precincts of her home. The Bible tells us that not only, amen, did uh, the young girl get healed while she was still down at the house, but later on in the text, past the place where we read, we are told that when Jesus left the region, that he was followed by people from that region, and they brought to him those who were in need of healing. As a matter of fact, down in verse 31, Matthew says, amen, that they were glorified. Not not simply God, but, but the God of Israel, as if to infer that those who gave glory to God were not those who were of Jewish descent the healed, and those who witnessed the healing. Amen. They gave glory to God all because of the faith of this mother. My brothers and sisters, let me close here and tell you that I believe that the faith of this mother is teaching us an overwhelming lesson. And it may be oversimplified for some of you, but I'm going to say it anyway. She teaches us the powerful lesson of never giving up. And I want to tell you today in the midst (coughs) of what we're going through today, don't you give up. Amen. I declare, my brothers and sisters, you've come too far to walk away without getting your victory. Amen. We've already come through much. The Bible uh, reminds us, amen, that many are the afflictions of the righteous, but the Lord delivers them out of them all. Amen. The hymnologist reminds us that through many dangers, toils, and snares, we have already come, but grace has brought us safe thus far, and grace will lead us home. I'm telling you again, you didn't come this far to walk away without your victory. Thank God for the faith of this mother who would not give up. Thank God for the faith of this mother, 
amen, who would not be uh, denied, who would not be turned aside. Every time she was met with indifference or insult, she was insistent with her request. And the Bible says that the Lord took a second look. The Lord, amen, was taught by the faith of this mother, so much so that he began to see the bigger picture, that it wasn't necessarily, I mean, about what the law said, amen, that there was an opportunity to bring life into the, into the life of a child who was struggling with demonic possession. I'm going to try, try to tell you one more time, don't you ever give up. Amen. There are conditions and circumstances, amen, that want to make you feel like giving up is your only option. But I'm here to tell you today, amen, that you again, you've come too far. You've come through too much. Amen. The tears have fallen long. The, the nights have been dark. The trouble and the weight upon you has been heavy. And yet you are still here. I'm telling you, you've come too far to walk away without getting your victory. Furthermore, I want to tell you, my brothers and sisters, I didn't bring this up earlier, but I'll bring it up now. Amen. That you, you got to be careful and make sure that you don't give up because of what someone says. As a matter of fact, you got to use what people say as a motivation to push harder. The Bible says that initially Jesus didn't say anything. It was the disciples of Jesus. And what they said about this woman to Jesus would have discouraged anybody. The Bible says that Jesus' disciples said to Jesus, send her away. She is bothering us. And I'm here to tell you, my friend, sometimes you're at, you stand in the place having your faith in the Lord. Sometimes you're in that place by yourself. You, you, you don't have the support of those who are walking with Jesus. Sometimes you just got to have faith all by yourself. You've got to be willing, amen, to believe God even when everybody else thinks you're being ridiculous and when everybody else thinks that you are being foolish. You've got to stick it out. You've got to stay there, amen, and don't listen to what other people say, but instead hear what they say and use it as motivation to push harder. Oh, God, help me today. Can I tell you again, my brothers and sisters, amen, the text is telling to teach us by using the faith of this mother that you and I should never give up. Let me close with this and tell you, I don't know about y'all, but I, I already know what giving up feels like. I know what's going to happen if I give up, but I want to see what happens if I don't give up. I already know what's going to happen if I do give up. I know that if, if I were the mother in the text, amen, my daughter will still be under demonic oppression. If I give up, I'm going to leave the same way I came. If I give up, amen, I'm going to have gone through all of that and still not gotten anything out of it. But I'm here to tell you, my brothers and sisters, I'm determined, and I pray you are too, even in the midst of this pandemic, amen, whether you're a mother or father, whether you're a child, whoever you are listening to me today, amen, I wonder if you feel like I feel today. Are you determined to see what happens if you don't give up? I want to encourage you today to hang in there. I've made up my mind that in the midst of everything, I'm still looking for a miracle, amen. In the midst of everything, I'm still expecting the impossible, Amen. I, I want to, I wanna, even in the midst of all of this misery, I want to feel the intangible. I want to see the invisible. I still believe that the sky is the limit to what I can have. Child of God, listen to me. I want to tell you, all you got to do is have faith. And if you have faith, if you can believe it, if you can receive it, I declare that God will perform it. Hallelujah. God will perform it today. God will perform perform, amen, that miracle in your life. God will bring to pass the very thing that you are asking God for. Thank God for the faith of this mother. I got to tell you that, that I am standing here today, I know in part, because I had a mother and I have a mother who has faith. And there are many of you, whether your mother is living or has since gone home to be with the Lord, you, you know that you are standing on the shoulders of your mother's faith. Thank God for the faith of a mother. But when we did not have the capacity to do for ourselves, mother did for us. We didn't, have, we didn't have the spiritual strength. We didn't have the wisdom. 
We didn't have the knowledge to know what to do and how to handle things. Sometimes we were out of control, but we had a mother who believed the Lord. Thank God for the faith of a mother who was willing to solicit help from the Savior. Not, not to save herself. I want you to hear this. It is, it is a selfless solicitation. She doesn't solicit help to save herself, but she goes to the Savior soliciting help to save her daughter. I take you back to what Jesus says in the text. He keeps listening to every response that she gives after Jesus tries his best to send her away. In verse 28, the Bible says that she said, Dear woman, your faith is great. Your request is granted. And her daughter was instantly healed. Glory to God. Let me try that one more time. Your faith is great. Your request is granted. I see now the level to which we need to take our faith. Jesus referred to her faith as great faith. Y'all, let's not give up until our faith becomes great. Let's hang in there. Let's tough it out. Amen. Let, this, let these moments that we're now in let it develop us and strengthen us until our faith becomes great. The Bible says, when Jesus determined that her faith was great, he then said, your request is granted. And her daughter was instantly healed. You see this word today. Bow your heads with me. Father, we thank you again for your word. We thank you, Lord, that we learn today that our faith has power and possibility. So much so, Lord, that great faith will cause the Lord sometimes to suspend his own rules. Thank you, Lord. Give us a faith that not, that not, that not only puts the Lord to the test, but give us a faith that in some way, Lord, can teach the Lord our position and our perspective. And help the Lord to see from our side of the table. We know that the Lord knows and can see everything. But I believe, oh God, that the Lord wants to see a faith from us that is intentional. Faith that cannot be swayed. A faith that is determined to not walk away without their victory. And so we thank you, Lord. We pray, God, we all will begin to see that we have that kind of faith. Just have to cultivate it. It's in us. You have given it to us. We just have to stir it up. And I believe it, and I pray for everyone who is listening to this broadcast, that they too will see miracles in the name of Jesus. I know, Lord, that in this time of pandemic, in this time of crisis, there's so many things that come out of it. We know that mental health is going to be a real issue because of the stress of social distancing and being quarantined and cut off. We know that the devil is going to use these moments. But I pray and I thank you, Lord, for miracles. I, I thank you, Lord, that there are going to be people who are going to stand in proxy, going to get in the gap for those who are being mentally stressed in this season. And I pray, God, that when you see our great faith, that instantly, immediately, right away, you will send healing to where it's needed. God, get the glory out of this is our prayer. We pray that because of our faith, not only will our request be honored, we pray, God, that, that our faith will, will also inspire others to initiate their faith and to be insistent with the same, that they too can see healing and miracle and deliverance. We pray these prayers now for everyone who is listening. Receive them, we pray, O oh God, in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. Amen and amen. 
God bless you. You guys have a wonderful Lord's Day and Mother's. We pray that you'll have as best of a, a Mother's Day as you can have under the circumstances. But be blessed, and we'll see you on tomorrow. Thank you for joining us today for Good Shepherd Streaming Services. Giving online is easy. Go to goodshepherdbaptist.org and click the Give Online banner. Or, using the app, click the Give Online icon. Follow us on social media on Facebook at Good Shepherd Baptist, Twitter and Instagram at Good Shepherd BC. And the Good Shepherd app is yet another great tool to keep connected. Download the Good Shepherd app from the Apple iOS App Store, Google Play, or Amazon App Store. We air every Sunday on Fox Richmond at 7.30 a.m. Please watch and support the broadcast. Good Shepherd Baptist Church, 2223 South Crater Road in Petersburg, Virginia. You may call at 804-732-5969. Building a church, developing a community, expanding services, and impacting lives. We thank you for the support of this ministry. See you next time.